This video is my proof of concept um, regarding adding an auto start generator controller uh, set up to my camper. I want to make sure that, it, first of all, that it would work uh, before I actually start making modifications to my camper, and I think it will. Um, so kind of my setup is that, you know, it had shore power or main power coming into my camper, which would go to my EMS, which is like surge protector, and I already have that set up. I added, would be adding a, an automatic transfer switch, um, and then I would be adding a controller to control the um, generator, and then a generator that's got actually a remote start, and I think that's the key. Um, all in all, I spent about $1,200, and of course my time, and um, we're doing this because um, we have dogs, and when we go camping, the campground power is not always reliable, and typically it's pretty hot in the summer, so we sure don't want them to not be without air. So this particular controller, this Deep Sea Electronics controller, um, 
you can set the settings from the controller itself, but not all the settings. Uh, there's a, a number of things that you can't do from just the controller itself, like through its little menu. Um, but you can do a bunch of things with this software that the software is actually free. You can go to Deep Sea Electronics dot com and you can register there and they will let you download the controller software free um, but I ended up paying sixty dollars for this 810 kit which for this controller has it has like a network plug like an ethernet plug on the back of it and so what came in the kit was the software which is outdated so I needed to get the newer software anyway um, the little controller box that converts the the network Ethernet cable to the USB um, to plug into my computer uh, so it could interface with it uh, is what I needed. Um, and I also tried, I ordered like a $6 Ethernet to USB thinking maybe that would work, but it turns out it's a serial connection. Um, and I don't know if the driver would still work with uh, that $6 connector, but anyway, so 60 bucks for this little kit so you can connect the thing, the controller to your computer. Let you set a lot more configuration, and then it also lets you do remote instrumentation, which is pretty neat. So you can basically see everything that's going on when you have it hooked up live. Um, it will show you the outputs, the inputs, all that good stuff. So it's kind of neat. Now, I'm not going to show you the connecting to the module and the, the reading the config file from the module and the writing the config file to the module. Um, you can save it to file too. I'm not going to go through any of that. Um, that's pretty easy to see and there's big buttons when you go to the screen. What I will show you is just some of the configuration that I had to change um, or that is available. Um, so one thing is that um, when you go into the miscellaneous tab, you have the single phase. You can choose your system, which I'm working with a single phase two wire. My generator is a two pole. Um, let you also start or uh, set the number of start attempts. Now on the inputs, I disabled the oil pressure, the engine temperature, and the fuel level because I wasn't using any of those. And what will happen is, um, what I noticed right off before I had the software kit, is that there was a, an error code um, on the controller and it was expecting oil pressure. Um, so without the software I couldn't actually turn it off and if you can't clear the error then it won't work. The controller itself won't work. Now I was able to put like a um, 100 ohm resistor on the oil pressure input and that faked the oil sender because it's a resistance type gauge. Um, but it's much better just to turn it off and not use it um, in the settings. And of course the digital inputs, I wasn't using any of these uh, as well. As far as the outputs, um, what I ended up doing is I'm only using one output, uh, and that is um, the, the there's two outputs in the configuration. Actually, there's there's a fuel solenoid output, um, and that's not configurable. Uh, and then there is a starter or crank signal output, um, 12 volts. Um, that is timer configurable, so I think I have it set to two or three seconds um, to, to energize. And then what I ended up using to be able to shut the generator down, because that push button start stop just needs to break or contact the two wires together. So when the generator signal is, um, when it, it goes into shutdown mode, for, for an instant, like a second, there is a signal on the closed main pulse. And so that's what I ended up using to uh, send that signal to shut down the generator. The LED or LCD, that's on the, there's four little lights that you can um, have lit up at different times uh, on the front of the con uh, controller. And you can put like your own little um, card in there that, labels what it is. Um, I'm not using any of these. I guess I have it when it's in auto mode, but other than that, I'm not using that. Of course, then there's your timers. There's two types of timers, start timers and load stopping timers. Pretty much all of this I 
I left as is. Um, I didn't really change much of this. I just left it as defaults. And then you have mains and generator and engine. Um, this is where you set your over and under voltage and over and under frequency. Um, I'm not really using this too much because, I mean, I did set them, but I'm not really using it too much because the generator itself will handle over and under frequency. Um, so, but I did set them up uh, anyway, I guess. And then there's this remote instrumentation option. And what it'll do is you can do the remote in instrumentation and connect um, to that. It'll connect to the controller. And then it will go through and it'll show you what's going on. Uh, I think this is my, um, I recorded this when I was doing the start, the auto start. So you'll notice that the fuel relay is now active and start is active. Again, those two are not configurable. And you can check the outputs while they're running. And there's that closed main pulse. That's that uh, when the generator was shutting down, that's what's sending the signal back to the push button on off relay.